Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and have viewed the previous two videos in which I have discussed force sensors and torque sensors. In this particular video, I am going to touch on the acceleration sensors or commonly called accelerometers. So, getting right to the point, there are four different types of accelerometers. The type is defined by the technology that is used to measure the acceleration. These four types are the piezoelectric type, the piezo-resistive type, the capacitive type, and the servo or force balance type. The very first thing that I am going to discuss is a piezoelectric type accelerometer. By the name, you can figure out that these accelerometers are going to use piezoelectric crystals somehow to measure the accelerations. These kind of accelerometers are the highest quality commercial accelerometers that you can find in the market. The schematic shown over here describes the working of this kind of accelerometer. A piezoelectric crystal is sandwiched between the outer body of the accelerometer and the mass. This mass is being pressed onto the piezoelectric crystal by a spring and a damper. Now suppose that the whole setup accelerate upwards, then what is going to happen? Because of the inertia, this mass will try to maintain its position, whereas the whole housing will move upwards with the upward accelerating body. This movement will cause the mass to press down on the piezoelectric crystal and if the piezoelectric crystal is pressed, it will generate corresponding charge. This charge will represent the amount of pressing and hence the acceleration. Therefore, larger the acceleration, the more this mass is going to press down on the piezoelectric crystal and smaller the acceleration, the less pressing of piezoelectric crystal will occur. Note over here that if acceleration quickly becomes zero, the mass will vibrate just like a spring mass damper system. Because of these vibrations, the piezoelectric crystal will be pressed and at other times stretched. Therefore, the output of this accelerometer will not die out as soon as the acceleration drops to zero. This whole system will behave like a second order system and its output will settle at zero after showing some oscillations. The major advantage of these kind of accelerometer is that they don't require any external power supply because the piezoelectric crystal is going to generate charge itself. Moreover, note over here that only vertical acceleration can be measured by placing the accelerometer in the shown orientation. Movement in horizontal direction will not cause the mass to press down the piezoelectric crystal. And therefore, acceleration in horizontal direction cannot be measured. However, if you want to measure horizontal acceleration, then simply place the whole setup in a suitable direction. A major disadvantage associated with these kind of accelerometers is that they cannot measure slowly changing acceleration. A slow change in acceleration will not allow the mass to press down the piezoelectric crystal so much that it can generate a measurable output. Therefore, these kind of accelerometers are commonly used to measure vibrations and impacts. The next type of accelerometers are based on piezoresistive material. In the schematic shown, you can see that there is a hanging mass which is being supported by a cantilever beam and on that cantilever beam, piezoresistive material is bonded. If you accelerate the whole setup upwards or downwards, then because of the inertia, the hanging seismic mass is going to resist this motion, and hence the cantilever beam will bend. The bending of cantilever beam will stretch or compress the piezoresistive material that is attached on the beam. Because of the stretching or compression of piezoresistive material, the resistance of this material is going to change and this change in resistance can easily be related to the amount of acceleration. Once again, these kind of accelerometers are used for measuring high shock accelerations. However, the temperature sensitivity of piezoresistive material is of a concern if the environment temperature is not constant. Furthermore, these accelerometers will require external power as well. The capacitive accelerometers use almost the same working principle as that of piezoresistive accelerometer. In this case, a mass spring damper system or a simple spring mass system is placed inside the accelerometer enclosure and if 
that enclosure is accelerated in a suitable direction, then because of the inertia, the mass will try to maintain its position, hence pressing down the capacitor plates towards each other. As the plate moves towards each other, the capacitance changes and hence this change in capacitance can easily be related to the acceleration. Once again, this kind of accelerometer will require external power source. The last type of accelerometer that I am going to discuss are the most sensitive ones and have greatest accuracy. By the name, you can guess that these accelerometers are going to utilize some servo mechanism, that is, some feedback mechanism to close the overall loop. The schematic shown over here describes the working of these kind of accelerometers. Acceleration in vertical direction will cause this magnetic mass to press the capacitor plate, hence changing the capacitance. This change in capacitance is read by the attached conditioning circuitry and a corresponding current signal is generated. This current signal is provided to the coil over here. The magnetic field produced in these coils will pull down the mass to its original location. Therefore, in these kind of accelerometers, mass doesn't move as much as in other kind of accelerometers because the more movement this mass is going to have, the more current the conditioning circuitry is going to generate and hence a larger magnetic field will be produced that will pull this magnetic mass back to its position. The amount of current generated by the conditioning circuitry will then represent the amount of acceleration. These kind of accelerometers are so much accurate that normally they are employed in guidance and navigation systems of aircrafts, missiles, spacecrafts, etc. Moreover, these kind of accelerometers are used in earthquake monitoring or measurement of micro tremor on the civil engineering structures as well. The higher sensitivity and stability and more accurate response at lower frequency range allows these accelerometers to be used in such applications. Moreover, these accelerometers exhibit large magnetic sensitivity because of the fact that magnetic mass and magnetic fields are used inside these accelerometers. Therefore, magnetic fields from the environment can adversely affect the working of this accelerometer. And lastly, these accelerometers will of course once again require an external power source. In practice, the accelerometer use one of the described working principle. Normally, in student projects, MEMS accelerometers are used, which are based once again on the spring mass system. Although the accelerometers measure acceleration in meters per second square, but the convention is to give the acceleration value in terms of gravity. This means an accelerometer capable of measuring acceleration of 1 g can in fact measure acceleration up to 9.81 meter per second. In practice, you can easily find accelerometers that can measure up to 3 or 5 g accelerations. This brings me to the end of the discussion of accelerometers and I hope that you have understood the working of different kind of accelerometers that I have discussed. Thank you and take care.